<laughs> Hello and welcome to our webinar, The Future Workplace, Your Migration to the Intelligent Communications with Colt. I am pleased to be joined today by Rui Frez, Global Product Manager, and David Barker, Sales Specialist, who will be your presenters. Together they will be highlighting the changes in the modern workplace and how that can positively impact your business. And why now is the time to change. We will talk you through a typical customer scenario with further information on our proposition and how you can make the most of your Microsoft license. Throughout the webinar, we have some polls and at the very end, a survey where we welcome your thoughts and feedback to ensure we're delivering the best webinars for you. At any point, you can send us a question through the chat box and we will leave time at the end of this webinar to go through as many questions as we have time for. Right now, I will hand you over to our presenters, Rui and David. Thank you very much, Emma. Uh, as, as you surely know, technology is evolving in a very fast pace. In a, in a very fast pace. So it's it's very important for our companies to to, to control the way into into how technology is adopted. And we can we are seeing several trends being used more and more inside our enterprises. Things like Social media is currently being used. Uh, companies like, for example, WhatsApp and Facebook are pushing their own, their own applications into this space. And it puts a lot of challenges inside our organizations. Like, for example, should, this, should these applications be used on our, inside our organizations? And according to that, it signifies also that we have four more devices being used inside organizations per user. And it's also, this also puts a lot of challenges inside the organization, how to manage them, how to control, how to control the way they are being used. Also, we have the challenge of several generations being used, uh, several generations on the same workplace, uh, which, which creates several types of adoption, several types of, of, of work methodologies. Home working is also a really big challenge inside the organizations because how to control the firewall, how to ensure that our users are, are, are being able to access the, the application in the most correct way. Collaboration is also a very important part of our, of our daily work. We are seeing that workers are more and more engaged with, with more teams, and we are seeing that 80% of their time is currently being used in collaborating. So collaborating makes a really big part of our daily work. So it should be done in the most correct way. And in most of the, orga of the organizations, it's not being done. We are facing several constraints in which technology is not benefiting, is not, is not helping our, our collaborators in doing their work. Sometimes we are facing several platforms which are not communicating between in the most correct ways. And sometimes it's a battle that we are facing against technology. The trends that we are seeing on the market uh, represent the unification of all of this. So represent the unification of all of these challenges in a single uh, in the single platform. So imagine that you could move everything to the cloud, moving your desktop, moving the data connection, the SIP trunk, and putting everything on the cloud side. So you don't face any issue choosing your technology, managing your technology, so you can focus on your business and this is the main point that we, that, that we want to focus on, on on this presentation. How can you focus on your business and save time? So let me know. What do you think are the main challenges that you face on your organization? Let us know. So you have some time to, 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 to answer to this poll, so uh, I'll give you about 10 seconds. <laughs> So, moving on. Why is moving to the cloud a game changer? Why should you move to the cloud inside the organization? First of all, it gives you the flexibility. The flexibility to update your solution, to upgrade uh, your, your user bases in a very flexible way. So, you, don't, you have a CapEx-free environment, meaning you don't have to, to think upfront of how many users will I have in about one year, you don't have to, to buy really big servers for, in order to host, to host all of the platforms that you have inside your house. 
Another point, it's related with security. So cloud platforms host millions and millions of users, so they are, they are capable of withstanding the, the, the hardest of the attacks uh, on the market. So, and they are always updated. So instead of having the, the application inside your house, inside your data center, trust that a company that, hold, that, that holds millions and millions of users having that responsibility on their side. Increased collaboration. If you are using the applications whatever you want, whenever you want, means that you have all the information you need on your side to use it whenever you, 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 you see fit. And according to some studies, uh, the, according to some studies, you can save until 3.2 hours per week for each of your workers in using a cloud collaboration solution. And 3.2 hours is a lot. But you can also add on top of those 3.2 hours the time that you lose in managing documents. Imagine, and, and I imagine that this went through each of your com any of your companies, you're working on a document and you put the document inside the email, you send it to, to someone else, and on the other side that person starts working on the, on the document. And on your side, you're, 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 you're still solving some of the issues that you, that you found on the document. Afterwards, you have two versions. The amount of time that you take in putting those two, those two documents together represents, represents work time, represents, in the end of the day, uh, money that your company is not, is not doing uh, because they are worrying about just putting the documentation together. So do increased collaboration, document control, until now we have five additional hours of work per week. This is almost a day, right? So you can save this day to, to, to actually work. You can save this day to go with your friends and have a beer, or you can use it to increase the competitiveness of your, of your, of your enterprise. So using all of this, enables you to have one more day per week, enables you to have more competitiveness on the market. And we see several um, companies, several consulting companies saying exactly that, that it's important for you to collaborate in a very positive way and to move to the cloud in order to have competitiveness in your, in your organizations. And it's not just that. We, we also see companies like Forbes and Forrester advertising that having your users with the correct means of communicating does not increase only the way they work, it increases also the, the happiness which, with, with which they work. So if you have a collaborator that works with, uh, with lower fatigue, with, uh, with higher engagement, means that you will develop more, means that you will work more for your company. Uh, and also Forrester says the same, that giving your worker something for him to be engaged with your company, giving your worker uh, something for him to be, to be able to communicate with their peers in the most correct way, gives him the engagement to, to, to give the extra mile most of times and, and to, to be engaged on the work that he's currently doing. On the other side, we have the cost of ineffective co co collaboration, which are costs that some, some, sometimes are, are, are overlooked upon. Your company becomes less agile. If, if you're not being able to communicate with your peers, of course, you'll not be able to, to, to send them the right, the right message. Lower quality in terms of decisions. If you're not being able to send the correct, the, the, the correct message to your management, you will not be able to get the correct decision at, at any point. And reduced innovation. Most of the ideas that we have that, that, that exist on the market that, that come from, from, from those startup companies de de derive, derive from communication between peers, spin-offs that, that, that come from, from, from companies already existing on the market. And this type of, of, uh, of, of innovation is very strong when there's a really strong point of communication, a really strong point of collaboration. I already told you about the one day, so I won't enter a lot of detail, but you know that the one day per week represents, in the end of the year, 8,000 pounds per collaborator that you have. 
If you have 10 collaborators in your company, if they are not collaborating in the, in the best way possible, this means that in, in a year you are losing 80k pounds, which is a lot of money, and you can see how this, how the, what, what, what this represents. So we, we already went through some of the challenges. Now I'll pass, I'll pass the ball to, to, to Dave for him to, to go through what are the architectures of, of the future and how can we manage uh, the problems that, that, that derive from there. Dave? Thank you, Rui, and thank you, everybody, for your time on the call today. So what we'll be doing over the next few minutes is taking a closer look at the digital transformation lifecycle, uh, how it impacts a network, and how contemporary applications are defining capacity requirements. But before we do this, we have a second poll which is entitled, Where Are You in Your Digital Transformation? So you have four options here in which to choose from. Uh, so wherever you are in the digital transformation lifecycle, uh, we'd love to hear from you, because um, we'd love to see um, how technology is shaping your business. Okay, so we will now start to talk around the future workplace and actually go back to starting at the beginning with traditional voice services. So on the screen in front of you, you have your vertical line uh, for capacity and your horizontal line for time. And the line from left to the center of the screen, the staggered line here, is to represent incremental growth on traditional voice services, uh, particularly around ISDN installations. So as you're all aware, historically, this would have been deployed per office. Uh, you'd have had a per PBX per site. And as organizations grew, there was either the case of adding more circuits to the existing circuits, or we would have opened new offices. And in there would have been new circuits and also new PBX installations. But this was proving a static and predictable model, and it involved installs, maintenance, and a lot of upkeep. So recently, this trend has seen customers transition from ISDN over to SIP trunking, which now represents the second line on the screen from the center of the page to the right-hand side. Now, again, as we're all aware, SIP is the common replacement for ISDN, particularly as the European market begins putting plans in place to retire ISDN. So for reference, in the UK, that is going to be at the end of 2025. And in uh, countries like uh, Germany and Switzerland, we're starting to see the phasing out of ISDN already. However, deployment of SIP services is a familiar pattern to ISDN where multiple PBXs would be installed across multiple locations or PBXs would be retained or upgraded to support IP traffic. So this style of setup is becoming increasingly challenging to meet new expectations of modern work behaviors. And one of the reasons for this now is because contemporary apps are placing unpredictable demands onto an organization's network. This is making it difficult to plan effectively and ensuring businesses are running at their maximum optimum. Some examples. Marketing could be in a position where they decide to run a campaign or, an, or a mass event. So what we then see is we then see a huge influx of calls into the contact center. We may find another situation where business travel has been reduced, international meetings have now been cancelled, and these types of meetings are no longer face-to-face, -face. they have now become virtual. So we start using things such as screen sharing or video conferencing to um, have our meetings now, which could potentially last for a morning, for an afternoon, or potentially all day. Thirdly, we could be in a position where we have seasonal trends, where we see spikes throughout the year for certain organizations. Now, all of these have common ground, and that common ground is they're all competing for existing capacity. The result now is pressure on the network outside of the subscribed capacity levels. What this means is there could be now an increase in latency. We could find ourselves in a position where we're experiencing an outage on the network and we could also find ourselves in a position where we're actually losing revenue and have some very unhappy customers. Now, to counteract these levels of activity, what we do is we tend to go back to what we're accustomed to, which is planning for maximum demand in a way where we go back and uh, employ the traditional voice and data services that we have done in the past. 
However, if the budget is not available, then the network becomes stagnant and eventually the ceiling will be hit again on the number of transactions that can be undertaken. So capacity planning in incremental steps is challenging the network infrastructure, particularly when you consider that it is estimated Office 365 is installed on over around 120 million devices and the new applications and the new programs are competing with traditional voice and data services to support real-time traffic for unified communications. So what if there is a service provider which allows present-day applications and on-premise servers to be moved away from the current network setup and into the cloud. So Microsoft now has a new service called Direct Routing. This is now where it allows businesses to connect a Microsoft-enabled session board controller to Microsoft Teams in either single or multiple countries, gaining access to the PSTN for inbound and outbound calling. Therefore, if a PBX is no longer required to be installed at each location, voice and data services can be centralized into a data center or data centers with dedicated connectivity, which will now provide higher levels of control. Microsoft Teams is just much more than a voice platform. Uh, it retains many of Microsoft's familiar programs, such as Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoints. You can use these when creating virtual teams. You can now share documents within your specific groups. You can now have persistent chats, which is now a key feature of the product, along with things like activity tracker, file tracker. Uh, you can manage your calendar. Literally, the list is endless on the things that you can do. But all of these features now increase our levels of flexibility. And companies no longer need to deploy multiple on-premise servers to support the network. Operations and maintenance can now be hugely simplified, meaning you can now reduce your risk. It means you can reduce cost by providing cloud intelligence for automation. So by taking this approach, organizations can now be more agile. It means you can deliver on projects and business objectives at the first time of asking. So as previously mentioned, this can all be supported in either single country, it can be supported in multiple country, and now can be managed by the one provider, which is Colt. So let's see how this could look when transforming a business by moving to the cloud and how it can save time and money. So if we take hardware first, and we move this over here now into the cloud, by taking legacy PBX systems uh, away from the office environment um, and installing them centrally by using deployed session border controller or session border controllers or subscribing to a cloud session border controller, this can reduce platform costs, it can significantly decrease the amount of sites to be managed, and it can all now be supported via a single phone call into a unified help desk. Now, let's take a look at Microsoft. So all of the familiar programs that we've spoken about and you can see on the screen in front of you are retained. So you've got um, here, you've got Excel, you've got PowerPoint, you've got Word, but also one of the key parts of um, using cloud intelligence now is, is SharePoint. And to give you a great example, particularly when it was creating this presentation for today, so Rui created a link on SharePoint now and that link on SharePoint he then sent out to Gemma, myself, to go and access where the PowerPoint presentation was stored. So this was now securely secured, securely stored in SharePoint, which then meant that only us three could actually go into that respective link and make changes to the PowerPoint presentation, which certainly saved us a lot of time when planning this project. And lastly, what about the voice? Well, this now can be managed by a single provider. consolidating numerous invoices across multiple countries and by centralizing this across Europe. So by moving your applications now to the cloud, you can save time, money and efforts whilst enjoying the benefits of a fully centralized and integrated management solution. So what I'll do now is I'm now going to talk you through a recent customer meeting where the customer was willing to make the change to the modern workplace. So if we start on the left-hand side of the drawing here, so the customer had a number of offices in, in different countries and they were using ISDM and they had a PBX at each site. This was proving costly and also difficult to manage. 
what we've done now is we've consolidated the offices into two sites, uh, which will now support the voice traffic for SIP. The SIP trunks are from different countries, and these have been logically built now against a private IP access, uh, IP access circuit into a data center. The traffic is now securely routed into a session border controller, and this session border controller now has backup, and it has resilience. If anything happens to the primary session border controller, then it has backup in order to be able to support the traffic. This traffic is now enabled into the Microsoft Cloud environment, and this is now where Teams really comes into the heart of the solution. So Teams, as we've mentioned, is much more now than just a voice platform. It can support you now with the call handling via your laptop. The customer now also has their preferred headset and handset of choice. They can now create their virtual teams. They're bringing their teamwork closer together. Uh, they're using the persistent chats. They're arranging their meetings. They're putting all of their documents together in their projects via SharePoint. They're using their Office 365 applications as well for support. And again, we could go on and on on all the different things that Teams can support. But all of this has now hugely improved the customer's productivity levels. Now, of course, this is just one example. There will be many examples out there, and every customer case will be different. But this is just to give you a flavor of how this could all potentially look. But ultimately, and the key point now, is that this customer has now moved from a legacy voice service now to a fully managed voice data and cloud solution. And on that note, I will now pass you back to Rui, who will now take you through the product proposition. Thanks for that, Dave. Uh, thank you for your insights. Uh, really appreciate that. And and I, we, we we are seeing a very interesting trend in the market in which companies are looking into migrating everything that they have that they had until then uh, on 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 premises to to a cloud environment. And and this is exactly what 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 Colt is 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 trying to help is is doing this migration from. Uh, uh, an on-premise environment to a cloud environment in which we take care of everything in an end-to-end -end proposition, integrating all the components that, that they so well spoke until now. So what are the components that you need in order to create a future desktop which make part of the cloud intelligent communication proposition? First of all, the productivity tools that make part of uh, our day-by-day -day usage. The email and calendar that all of us in this in, in this in this webinar use on a day-by-day -day basis. Chat, audio, and video. Can you imagine a company without without instant messaging? Uh, currently, can you imagine a company without without the, having the capability to do a video conference? None of this is possible without having the underlying infrastructure to support all of this. The, an high-speed data access in order to support the connectivity to the cloud in order to access the services that are currently hosted on the cloud. Voice. Voice is a commodity, but we cannot live without, without voice. So it's a very important factor in all of the solutions. If, you're, if your collaboration solution is not connected to the PSTN, doesn't have a reliable and, and capable SIP trunk, most of the times you're not being able to speak with your client, you're not being able to speak with your agents, you're not being able to connect to the world. The professional services is also a very important point of any solution. And they go from just a part of consulting, understanding what, what are the requirements that you need to upgrade. What are the points that you feel like your company is not uh, working correctly? What are the companies that should be upgraded? After these components are uh, understood, we pass to the deployment phase in which you put all of those components in the correct way inside the organization. After that, there's a very needed adoption and training phase in order for the applications to be used in the most correct way. And after that, the needed support for the solution to continue working uh, according to your requirements and according to what, to what you, you perceive as the future desktop. So let me know. In which phase of the digital transformation are you? In which phase do you think, you, to what phase do you think you should evolve to? Just press the button that you think 
uh, you, you should you should be updating your organization. Okay, moving on. But why should I choose cold? You ask me. Uh, first of all, uh, we we have all of these applications that I've that I've just showed completely integrated with our network. So we have we have our network completely uh, focused in serving the access to these applications. And that's leading me to the next point, which is the first in class in predictable connectivity. If you know that the network is there to, to, to solve your needs, that the network is over there resilience, with, with resiliency and capable of withstanding the bandwidth that, that you want to put to the cloud, it gives you the confidence to, 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 to move in to adopt uh, these kind of solutions. Third point, simplified procurement. We sometimes overlook upon the, the, the time we spend in, in procurement, the time we spend in managing contracts and managing invoices, and, and, and sometimes even managing exchange, exchange rates, it's also a very, it's, it's very time-consuming point. Imagine that someone can do this for you and that someone can do a simplified procurement in a single point of contact for your organization throughout, throughout MA. Fourth point, local support and expertise. I can't stress enough the necessity of having someone who understands our needs and someone who understands uh, what we actually need in the local in, in, a, in, a, in a local way. Colt has offices throughout throughout the world, and we understand the local culture and we understand how the solutions must be engaging and how the solutions should be installed in order to comply with those with those rules, be them uh, regulatory rules, be them even cultural rules. <laughs> Some that, that, that those exist also. So, first, the, the fifth point is a multi-country solution. Imagine that you have an office in Spain, another in Portugal, another in France, Germany, etc. In the legacy model, you would have to go to each of those countries and look for a local provider to support you in those countries. Colt, the, the solution that we just released, Colt Intelligent Communication, offers you that capability, having a centralized procurement and having this multi-country solution helping you save time and save money. Solution, the solution was released in 13 countries and we are currently, currently deploying the solution in, in those 13 countries. For we, but we are already preparing the next steps. We're already preparing the roadmap of which are the countries that we should evolve to, that we should, that we should onboard as the next steps. So let us know what are your challenges in countries which are not part of this list so we can help you solve those, those, those challenges with the same quality, with the same global networks that we, that, that we support. So, but moving on. As part of our core solution, like, like Dave was, was, was talking about, we have an application, and that application is what we look into as being the future of collaborating. The future of collaborating is a fully integrated and immersive front end in which we can have not only the video tools, the audio tools, everything that we do, for example, on Skype for Business, but imagine if you could integrate that Skype for Business with your Word, with your email, with your meeting notes. So, this is what we are looking into when, 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 when referring to Teams. So, first of all, you can chat, call your agents, calling your clients. Uh, you can have chat. You can have, you can have presence. You can check your meetings. You can book meetings. Everything that you did, uh, that you did until now, in different applications. For example, you would go to Skype for Business in order to do a call, to, to call or to or to send an instant messaging or to see if and if someone was 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 active, you would go to Outlook in order to book a meeting. Now you can do it all from a single front end. You can even collaborate in a in a in a faster way, in a in a better way. For example, in this in this in, in the example that you're seeing on your, on your screen, in a marketing meeting. A document referring to the July promotion is being is being put in the in, in the chat. Everyone, which is on that group, can go into that chat and change 
and, and do, do a collaborative approach to that document in order to exchange ideas, in order to do a real collaborative approach to a meeting. And a very important point is that the chat is persistent. So you don't have to go in creating additional, additional databases, additional components in order to, to have the chat in a single window, in the single window with all the documentation. It's already out of the box. What you can add to the solution are apps. So imagine that you, that you want to integrate your solution with Salesforce. Imagine that you want to, to, to have your HR department send a notice to, to the management whenever they, 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 they put a new job on LinkedIn. Now you can do it with Tim. You just have to come to the, to the App Store and install the app that you need. It's as easy as that. You don't have to go with really, really difficult uh, installations or configurations or, or go to an independent software vendor in order to do that. You can do it on your own uh, via, via the Teams interface and work with confidence. This, this is a very important point. If, if you can manage how your platform is currently being used, it means that you can control uh, the trends that will happen in the, in the, in the future. So, but Teams doesn't stay only on the desktop. You have other kinds of, dev of devices, personal devices, like for example, your mobile, which, which, which can be iOS, which can be Android, and Teams can be run over there. The PC, we, we, already, we already showed you how it, how, it, how it looks like. Personal peripherals, like, like, like headsets, can be connected to the PC or to the mobile in order to be used as part, in order to enrich the experience that you get from, from the voice on Teams. And desk phones and mobile phone stations from, from vendors like, for example, audio codes can be put inside the solution, can be connected to Teams in order to give you uh, additional functionalities on the, on, the, on, the, on the platform. Other devices like, for example, shared devices in which we have conference phones, room systems. In room systems, I'm talking about video conferencing devices, uh, interactive whiteboards in order to augment the collaborative, collaborative capability of a meeting are also possible of, of connecting to, to, to Teams. But I've already shown you most, most, of the, most of what we can do with Teams. But one very important point, which is, which is again, sometimes overlooked upon, is the support. So in order to ensure that your solution works in the, in the, in the most correct way, in order to, to, to ensure that your solution is, is working and it is, 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 is answering all the requirements that, that you have. We've built a really strong help desk, a really strong help desk which allows you uh, to, to, to have a single point of contact to every kind of problem that you might have, be it data connectivity problems, be it voice connectivity issues. Office 365 changes, manage session border controller issues, like for example, a service request, desk phones or headsets issues. So everything that you have to do is just call our, our, our unified help desk and we will be there to solve that issue uh, and we will be there to, to, to solve all the problems that you might have with each model of the solution. Okay, but referring to models, to modules that you have, that we have on the solution, uh, just a short resume of what we spoke until now. So, close intelligent communication uh, gives you a fully unified, ex fully unified experience that goes from the license until the support, passing through the network, passing through the SPC, passing through the seed trunk. But imagine that you that you already have the license. You can pick and choose the model. You can pick and choose the modules that you that, that you that you want to acquire, and you can pick and choose the modules that you. That, that, that you want call to provide, that you want call to, to, to help you solve the challenge of the modern workplace. Be it on the licensing with the connectivity, be it on the, the SPC in order to support direct routing and the SIP trunk, be it, be it on the headset. So ask us about, about what, you, what are the challenges and we'll be, we'll be able to, 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 to answer those challenges in the, in the most correct way. Okay, passing the ball to, to you, Gemma. 
Thank you, Rui and David, for uh, your thoughts, your expertise, and your advice based on what you're seeing in the marketplace and um, how Colt can assist. Key learnings for me uh, were how much time I can save in my day and therefore how much more effective I can be through the use of collaboration tools, how I can manage unpredictable demand on my voice capacity with an, an improved service and significant cost benefit, and how Colt can be the single point of contact and contract for my communication and collaboration through an integrated desktop service. Thank you to all of those that participated in the polls through the session. We're going to be sharing the results after this webinar, along with a recording of the webinar so that you can watch it again at a time of your convenience and uh, share with your colleagues as well. To participate in more of our events uh, that Colt will host throughout the year, please ensure that you sign up for our newsletter using the contact details available through your uh, browser now. And uh, when you confirm your GDPR agreement, then we will keep you updated throughout the course of the year. There will be a short survey that we'll share at the end of this webinar where we really appreciate your feedback. As always, the results of these surveys can help us to align our content for your interests and make your webinar experience as valuable as possible. So I encourage you to pass on your feedback. We now have time for some questions that have been sent through whilst we've been talking to you. We will aim to get through as many of these as succinctly as possible, but those that we don't manage to, we can arrange to have some follow-up afterwards. And indeed, if you did want more information about our service, please do not hesitate to contact us, both through your account exec and also by contacting David and Rui directly um, via LinkedIn or indeed through uh, the cult.net website. We look forward to discussing with you in more detail after this call. Now then, what we'll do is we'll just look at some of the questions that have come up whilst we've been talking. So the first one that I have here is somebody who is an Office 365 Business Premium uh, user with Teams. They have a, a cloud IP telephony solution um, already, and they're keen to understand how um, our solution can help save money by integrating their two different systems separately together as one of the frustrations they're having is, is managing the likes of their contact and address books between the mm -hmm. two systems um, and their chat features, et cetera. So they're very keen to understand more yeah. about a consolidated solution. That's, that's a very good question, and, uh, and, uh, and thank, you for, thank you for sending it. Uh, this, this, is, this is actually a common problem that we see on the market in which you, some, some, some clients have a solution which is from a vendor, and afterwards they are using uh, an Active Directory which is from Microsoft, or even a, a, an Active Directory which might not be from from Microsoft. And sometimes there are there are issues in putting everything together. What what we always recommend when going with a solution to the cloud is having everything on the same on the same on the same platform and having everything integrated on the same solution. Because like that, you ensure that the, that the integration between, between the, the elements is seamless and it works in the most correct way. Uh, but, but of course, every, every architecture is an architecture and there's always, way, always ways of, of moving from uh, a, a legacy solution or, or an on-premise solution to a more uh, evolved solution which we are using, the, 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 the modules, that that we have on the cloud, and if if you if you if you give us some more details, probably we can devise a plan in which we can we can help you do that digital transformation of your desktop and understanding what are the platforms that you have that should be moved to the cloud. Okay, great, thank you, Rui. Um, another question has come through about um, the simplification that we can provide with regards to the procurement of these services. How do we make it more simple for our customers? <laughs> okay, so uh, and, and until until now we've been saying that we, we 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 have several components on the solution, and you would have to go to different partners in order to get uh, uh, the, the 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 full end-to-end -end solution. What we provide as part as part of Colt is uh, giving everything as part of a bundle. So you have not only the the direct routing components but also the licenses, also the professional services, the support over, over the entire architecture, the IP, the, 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 the data, solution, the data um, connections, the SIP trunk connections, 
everything bundled up. And this, this, is a very, this is a very strong point because you don't have to go to several, several service providers or several partners to get all of these components. You can come to Colt and we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be happy to simplify your procurement with this. Okay, great, thank you. Um, another one that has just come up has been with regards to the, the 13 countries that we support at the moment. Um, yeah. Is there a way in which we can uh, support outside of those 13 countries? Potentially, yes. Uh, we would need to know what those countries are. Um, what we always say is, is anything that falls outside of the cult's core 13 countries, we will handle on a bespoke basis. Uh, very much because we'd need to go and check with local providers what the regulations are, whether we, we could actually support the service by routing into one of our SBCs, or whether it would be a case of we'd actually need to send the traffic to a local session border controller before sending on. So we'd need to know the list of the countries if possible. Uh, if you have a list, obviously please feel free to send across and obviously we can start that due diligence for you right away. Thank you. Um, another one I have is uh, this customer is currently running Skype for Business. Um, does Colt manage the migration to Teams and what if I'm currently running with another manufacturer? Absolutely yes. So uh, it's, it's a very strong point of our, of our proposition. It's, it's also the migration from from legacy systems, uh, be it on-premise systems or even Skype for Business Online on Office 365 to Teams. So we we, we, we actually uh, have prepared a series of statement of works con considering all the, the, the different scenarios that we can find when migrating from Skype for Business to Teams. I always recommend having a, uh, having a conversation into uh, into what is your organization, understanding what are the most critical uh, departments that you have in order to afterwards devise the best way of moving from, from what you currently have to a fully cloud solution which you, you're using, for example, Teams. Okay, thank you. Um, and there's a question here about uh, when will Microsoft move users to Windows 10? Um, we believe uh, it's going to be probably in about the next 18 months or so. So I would say the cur currently Microsoft. Sorry, if I if I just barge in. Currently Microsoft uh, is is advising all of their users to move to move to Windows 10 in order to support all the applications that they have on Office 365. So currently, for example, if you if you acquire Office 365, uh, the, the Microsoft 365 license. You already have Windows 10 as part of it, so you don't have, for example, Windows 7 as part of S or Windows 8 as part of the solution. You go directly to Windows 10. Yeah. In terms of a hard cut-off date, I don't know if they've announced one officially, but I'd probably anticipate anything probably from about the end of 2020. But again, we can we'll, we'll look out for the press releases for that one. Okay. Uh, and how will Colt manage the Office 365 faults or service requests that come through? Can I? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, so, as as you as you heard from my presentation, we've created a, a centralized help desk in order to to help you with all with all the issues that that you might have. So, when when you have an Office 365 fault, what we what we expect from 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 your side is to call our number and and explain what you want to to have done in the Office 365 365 platform, and afterwards. We, this will go to our Office 365 team inside of Colt, and they will be they'll be managing this. And if they have any question, they will be contacting you directly in order to understand uh, the real requirements. If the if those you if if the ones were that were passed in the be, passed in to, to our side in the beginning were not clear. Okay, thank you. Uh, question here about the professional service options that we can provide. Can we be a bit more um, explicit on what that means? We, we, we currently divide the professional service into, into four areas. The consulting part, consulting and pre-sales part, in which we, for, for example, have site survey, in which we, for example, have the, 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 the assessment to your, to your network understanding if you can comply with, with the Teams and Skype for Business uh, parameters that were defined by Microsoft. Afterwards, we have the deployment part, deployment and configuration, which, for example, we have the Skype for Business in Teams installation and configuration. Afterwards, we have the SPC installation, uh, whatever it is. It, it can be in a, it can be in a in a redundant way. It can be in a in a in a single way. And in the end, you have the training 
and consultancy as part of the professional services. Services like, for example, adoption services in which we send a, consul a consultant to your, to, your, to your branch in order to speak with your decision makers and try to devise the best plan on how should teams be, be, be adopted and how can we, can we take the best out of teams in your, in your organization. Of course, the training, uh, floor walking uh, are also included in this, in this training capabilities. Uh, on our uh, product, we also have already included in, in, the, in, the, in, in the solution the support over all the components that you, that, that you acquire from Colt. It's probably also worth quickly mentioning that there is a document on the professional services that are available and all of the different options with a breakdown for each requirement. So again, if this needs to be sent out, we're more yeah. than happy to send that out to our customers. Thank you. Um, and there's a question here about security. How secure is my data in Microsoft Cloud environment? That's, that, that, that's a very good question, and it's a question that, that, that creates several debates, that created several debates in the past. And uh, I, 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 I see it like this, and, uh, and probably this is more of, a, of, of, a, of an offline discussion that we should have. Microsoft has a, has a cloud platform in which, which supports millions of users. And since it supports millions of users, it has the highest degrees of, of security capabilities that, that we can see on the cloud platforms. Uh, in, when, when you compare this with keeping your documents in, inside your house, you, you can you, you can be you, you can actually go through or have several problems of someone accessing your 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 data in the not in the correct way, uh, even if they are outside of your organization. In the cloud, you don't have this kind this kind this kind of problems unless you actually give the permission for them to access this. So there there there, there are several components to security which which are much more. Um, which have a, a much more generic ambit uh, than than the one that that we that we are referring to here. Uh, but I'll be happy to have a discussion to whomever sent this question and and go a little bit more in deep on what what are the security aspects. Is it accessing a document? Is it uh, understanding that the correct person is uh, doing the calls in the most correct manner? So there are several several specific. Uh, things that we can refer to when 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 speaking about security on the cloud, and also just to add to that, um, on the Office 365 Application Center now, there is a drop-down menu for the respective sector that organisations fall into, with all of the respective security certificates and documentation on where and how Microsoft secures your data. So things like the ISO 27001 security certificate, that's all there. But again, all of that stuff now is, is available to be downloaded via the application center. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, we've just had a question in with regards to the content that we've gone through today and sharing that with uh, people afterwards. Yes, we can absolutely do that. We will be in touch not only um, with regards to the content, but the polls that we've um, had your responses on. And also we will share with you a um, recorded version of this so that you can listen to it on demand afterwards as well. Um, and then you'll be able to access all the information. There is another question that's also come in with regards to the commercials with regards to these services. Um, so obviously some people who are interested to understand how to sign up. Um, anything you can say on that one? Probably it would be best if, if we had a conversation with that person. Uh, I, I, I always think that bespoke is a new standard. Of course, uh, the, every, 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 we have components which are, which are standard, like, for example, the license price, which, which, which is mostly regulated by, by, by Microsoft. But there are other, other components which are seen in a project-by-project basis, project according to, for example, with the professional service that you, that, that you want to acquire. Like, for example, do you want to migrate your exchange from a, from a local server to the cloud? Do you, want, do, you want, do you prefer to install one SPC on one, on one site, or do you prefer having a double SPC installation in active, in active backup? So there are several tweaks that, of the solution. I'll be happy to have a conversation in order to go a little bit more in depth of what are the, or what are the requirements. Okay, great. Uh, we've had a few more questions, but they've been very similar. Um, so uh, rather than uh, re repeating those, we uh, have gone through those already. Um, I think that's otherwise um, a, a good wrap up of, of that, everything that's come through to us. So um, from, from our side, um, 
I think what we'll do is uh, we'll pull everything together for those that have attended. Thank you all once again for joining us today, and, and thank you again to um, David and Rui for your insight around this. Um, if uh, anybody does need to get in touch, then please do do so. Um, otherwise, we look forward to speaking to you again uh, on our subsequent meetings and webinars. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you.